begin. So welcome everyone. My name is Mary Clark and I work for the Calgary Regional Consortium and uh, we are very happy today to bring you Choose Your Own Adventure with Junior Achievements featuring Angelica Hogan and Robert, Robert de Guzman. So enjoy the session. Oh, and sorry, I just have one more uh, thing I need to mention. For the closed captioning, that option is available. And if on your screen, you can choose the more button, and then it will allow you to do the captions and you can view it that way. Or I will paste right now into the chat. You can view it by clicking, um, by going to this link as well through uh, the sync words. So if you're having any issues with that, please let me know and we'll try to uh, figure that out. And, uh, and now I will pass it on. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Mary. Good morning, everyone. Excited to be here today. I am going to start a screen share with you all. Excited to welcome Greystone Centennial School and Rosary Roman School. Um, let me get my screen sharing on and we will get acquainted this morning. We have an hour and we have some great stuff we would love to share with everyone. So I am um, just on my laptop today. If someone could please pop off mute and let me know if you guys can see my PowerPoint labeled Economics for Success, that would be great. Yeah, I saw, I saw a thumbs up. Good, awesome, thanks Robert. Um, we are gonna get started with a quick video and then some introductions. Hey! Welcome to your Junior Achievement of Canada program. Your facilitator has volunteered their time, so please stay engaged, ask any questions that you have, and have fun. Woo! All right, I am going to toss my baton over to my wonderful co-presenter, Mr. Robert de Guzman. Robert, why don't you officially begin our breakout session today? Sure, thank you, Angelica. Um, so Welcome everyone, good morning. Um, my name is Robert de Guzman. I'm actually a director for Junior Achievement of Northern Alberta and the Northwest Territories. And if you don't know, Junior Achievement is one of the world's largest not-for-profit organizations. And our focus is to supplement and fill in the gaps, so to speak, on, on what you don't really learn in school, but things that are kind of life skills, um, skills that will help you in the working world. And primarily we focus on financial literacy. That's things like managing a budget, dealing with credit card debt, uh, buying a new home, um, things like that, thinking about income. Work readiness leads right into work readiness. And entrepreneurship, um, entrepreneurship, being, I guess the basic example is starting up your own business and owning and operating your own business um, or thinking like a business owner. So that's, that's Junior Achievement. Today, we're actually just doing lesson one of a full four lesson program that's typically taught to grade nine students. It's called Economics for Success. And, and today we're doing Choose Your Own Adventure, but the whole premise here is to look at the world in a bit of an economic perspective and think about where you can sort of match your, your skills and initiatives and passions and align that with the working world and, and what it's like in the real world and think about um, sort of what are, the, what are the steps that might get you from A to B. I'm I'm so, I'm kind of revealing a little bit too much and and but this is a good introduction for the for the class. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I guess just real quickly uh, a little bit more about myself. Um, I am a lawyer at Dentons Canada. Um, we are a, a global international law firm. Um, we have offices in more than ninety different countries worldwide. Um, but uh, but we actually just. Going back to Alberta, we do have two large offices, one in Edmonton, one in Calgary. I'm in our Edmonton office. Um, for me, financial literacy is kind of near and dear to what I do on a daily basis. I'm a banking lawyer. And unfortunately, in, in the banking world, that also means dealing with insolvency and bankruptcy matters too. So, 
So there's a, there's a lot of relevance, there's a lot of lessons learned. And, and if all of the students in the province could have learned and received programming on financial literacy, um, I imagine uh, there might be a lot less bankruptcies in the world, but, uh, but it is what it is. So here we are. Wonderful, very well said. Um, hi everyone, my name is Angelica. You guys can call me Ange, and I am a program supervisor with JA Northern Alberta, uh, JANA for short. Uh, very grateful that we were asked to be part of this AMP Youth Summit, and I'm very pleased that you guys are joining us today. So we are gonna get going into our first lesson, like Robert was saying, and I just wanna make sure um, that Ms. Cully and Mr. McGillery, um, your students have workbooks available uh, to go and take notes and do some of the activities. Uh, if you guys could kindly either pop off mute or just pop into the chat that your students are equipped with their student portfolios, we can get started. Oh, and I see a little chat comes up. Yes, thank you, Ms. Cully. And Mr. McGillery, I did send over a printable form. So um, if you have those, great. Uh, if not, even a piece of paper and a pencil will be wonderful. Oh, another chat popped up. Yes, we do. Wonderful. I love it. Okay, so lesson one, choose your own adventure, which is the title of our session today. Let me get into the next slide. So what we're going to do, here are some of the objectives we're hoping to cover with you guys. Um, we have you till 1130. We're going to talk a bit about goal setting. Um, very much like Robert chatted, we want to get you guys thinking about some of your skills and interests and what that can mean if you're looking at getting into the world of work. Uh, job trends, we are going to chat about post-secondary education, have a fun little game um, at the very end of the lesson. And just so all of our students know, um, we will be continuing this course uh, with your teachers. So Ms. Cully, your students at uh, Greystone Centennial will have the option to be doing this um, afterwards. And Mr. McGillery, um, your student or your students that are with you today um, will be able to continue forth once you receive our program kit. So I'm very excited to provide uh, this initial installation of EFS, Economics for Success. So we're going to begin with a goal setting video. Um, it's only a couple minutes long. And as soon as we're done that, we're going to go into our very first activity. Have you ever wondered just how to go about achieving a goal? Well, there's a really great trick you can use called the goal pyramid. Here's what you do. Draw a big triangle, more or less equilateral. Divide it horizontally into four sections. In the topmost section, write your big ultimate goal. Let's say it's winning a medal at the Olympics. Now, work down from the top. What would you have to achieve in order to be able to get to that ultimate goal? Write that in the second section down from the top. In our scenario, we'd have to qualify for the Olympics. Next, think about what you'd have to achieve in order to attain that second tier goal. In our example, it would be training. Go ahead and write yours in the third section. Finally, in that largest, lowest section in the pyramid, we're going to put all those little everyday things you'd have to do in order to be able to get to the next level up. In my example, in order to be able to train effectively, I'm going to need to follow excellent nutrition, get high quality sleep, and be disciplined in my post-workout recovery, which involves things like icing my knees and getting regular massages. Think about all the small but essential daily disciplines you'll have to keep in order to achieve your next level goal. Write all those in the bottom section. Let's do another super quick example. You might set a goal to buy a smartphone. We'll put that up here. Now let's start working backwards. In order to buy a smartphone, you'll need to save money and gain knowledge about the different smartphones available. In order to get there, you'll have to complete your chores and do your research. What do we add in the bottom section? The really important everyday choices go here, like emptying the dishwasher, raking the leaves, and reading about phone specifics. This is the day-to-day -day stuff, the choices that are going to get you the smartphone up here. To recap, draw a pyramid with four horizontal sections. Think of your big ultimate goal and work backwards to figure out the choices you can make every day that will set you up for achieving your big top-level goal. 
Wonderful. So I'm going to stop my screen share because I'd love to see you guys. I know uh, we have our teachers on off camera, but uh, Ms. McCulley and Mr. McGillivray, if you have access to a webcam and we can have kind of a cross section of you and your students, uh, that's just a little bit more engaging for Robert and I. So if you're able to turn your cameras on, that would be great. Um, now that we've watched the video, we're going to have, oh, there are our Spruce Ghost students. Hi, guys. We're going to get you guys to go into your booklet. Um, so this will be the gold pyramid page. I'm going to give you guys about five minutes. I'm going to put a digital timer on so it's easy. I'm going to get you guys to start thinking about what is it you really want to achieve. Now, I think the majority of our students are junior high, uh, seven, eight, nine, um, whether that is something that requires a lot of money or whether it's a, kind of a personal goal. We're going to get you guys to break things down into the four sections, and then I'm going to look for at least one volunteer to share kind of what they put down. And I have a personal story that I want to share back when I was in grade nine um, and going to city finals in track and field. So let me get the digital timer up and running. And I'm going to screen share that. And once we have completed that, we will uh, jump back on and we will converse and see what you guys have put in. So you guys can get started as I find my link. And I'm sorry, I should have had the link up and running beforehand. Here it is, candle timer. I love using this one. But four minutes now, because you guys have probably started already set. Let me screen share. And when I screen share, we're going to go into our timer. Okay, four minutes. I'll pop off mute and I will see you guys when this is done.
All right, guys, we're coming down to the last minute. Can I just have a quick show of hands of people who have completed their goal setting pyramid? Awesome, one, two, three, four. Perfect, thank you, Mr. McGillery. I'm gonna pause and clear this. And I'm gonna go back into the PowerPoint. So I know it's hard to be one of the first people to share. So why don't I share with you guys a little bit about my experience when I was in grade nine. And I would really love it to hear from one of the students, even um, if we can unmute um, uh, and, and speak, or if your students wanna give you kind of their, their sheet you wanna share, we can look at doing it that way. So my story is kind of similar to what was shared on the video, but um, when I was in grade nine here in Edmonton, I was born and raised in Edmonton, I really was in love with high jump uh, and track and field. And my big goal, was to prepare to go to the semifinals and get into one of the top three placements across Metro Edmonton. So that's what I had in my, my top goal. My secondary level of things I would need to do to achieve that is I needed to qualify for a position to represent my junior high school. I went to um, St. Elizabeth Seton on the city's north end, and there was a lot of tall girls like me um, that were all trying to be that school representative. So I needed to make sure uh, during track and field day at school, I had to be near the top to be able to go to city finals. The third portion of my triangle um, that I would have to do is obviously doing practice, um, both physically with the track and field coaches and um, staying after school to be doing some sessions, working on my running and working on um, my ability to jump. I played volleyball in junior and senior high school as well. So I had a pretty good vertical and I wanted to obviously keep building on that. I also needed to practice mentally. Um, I had a wonderful coach who was uh, really keen on getting me to think about like visualizing myself achieving that jump and getting to that next level as the, the pool kind of got higher and higher. So he got me doing a lot of mental exercises as well, which was really interesting and it was great for preparing me. And then my little everyday things that I wrote down here uh, that I was doing in grade nine and it kind of mimics the video, but it makes sense is I was trying to eat healthy. I was trying to stay away from the gummies and the pop and the junk because it just made me feel super tired and blah, right? I needed to have that energy to put into my practices. Um, I was trying to go to bed early on the days I knew I had practice after school. Sometimes I did practice before school and after school, but having that was important because you got no energy. You're definitely not going to be running around um, a track and jumping at the highest level possible um, and then doing some of that training. So um, I committed a lot of time into this high jump goal of mine, and I'm happy to say I made it to city finals. I wasn't the top the top jumper, unfortunately. I think I ranked fourth or fifth. I was just under that medal podium place. But when I thought about it, I was like, there were probably a hundred or so, probably more than a hundred, like thousands of kids across Edmonton in junior high that was that were trying to get to this part, this this event. I made it and I got into top four. So I was really proud of myself and um, it was a really great experience and one I like to talk about. So that's kind of my goal pyramid back when I was in the junior high side. Uh, Mr. McGillery or Mrs. Cully, do we maybe have an example that you could share for us or one of your students would like to share with us? Yes, uh, we did one together and Shay said they would share for us. Awesome, good job. Okay, wonderful. Why don't you go ahead and start from the top and work your way down and share what you guys came up with. I will also, I'll, I'll, I'll help Jay share. So we did it all together and we thought, you know, a potentially a car, purchasing a car would be in their future. Totally. So things that they would have to do, they said that they would all like to get a job to start saving mm -hmm. and uh, practicing and studying for a learner's permit and or a license. Mm -hmm. And then uh, things that they would have to do, we realized we'd have to get a resume in order for the resume, we'd have to get certain qualifications. And little everyday things, they realized that they could be doing little things at home to help out and chip in to start the saving process. 
That is fantastic. And I love that you guys came up with a car. That is, that is awesome. That is something as adults we use all the time. There's buses, but transportation is a huge thing. So that is wonderful. Thank you very much, Greystone students. I am really glad to hear that. Mr. McGillery, McGillery, do you want to share one or should we be moving on to the next activity? Sure, I could share one. Awesome. <laughs> it was pretty much, uh, I was talking to Preston here and it was about graduating grade 12. Awesome. Uh, Great goal. And that's one of the, for, for me, that's what it was. And I just asked him because he wasn't really goal oriented. So I helped him with this one. Um, and it was more or less focusing on schoolwork is mm -hmm. your first, you'd have to. And then your second, you'd have to study. You'd have to really, really engage and try and study to get that. And then the little every everyday things is showing up, paying attention, getting enough rest before you come to school. So uh, that, that was one of the things for me for when I grew up was that was one of my goals to get and I got that one. So it was pretty much that for for somebody who doesn't have a goal, a small goal like that is a, a good one to have for sure. A hundred percent. I think that's great. You've touched on a, a lot of key things. Robert, anything you want to add into, you know, this conversation and how sometimes just breaking things up can really help you manage what it is you're looking to do? Yeah, I, I like to add like that, that, that second example just shows how like there's a lot of everyday things that we like school in itself isn't just what we learn, but also how we learn to behave or how we learn to interact with each other. So there's a lot of life lessons that can be learned in school apart from the actual subject matter that you're learning. Um, so so I think that's a, that was an excellent goal, like just just to graduate in itself. There's more to graduating than just learning. I'm oversimplifying, but learning math or science or or whatever the case may be. But uh, there's a whole level of interaction and social interaction, how we belong and, and interact with each other. So that was an excellent goal. Very well said. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate the participation. It helps fill Robert and I's bucket as we facilitate. So uh, we're going to be moving over into career exploration and job trends, but just following through with PowerPoint, you know, some of the things we can learn about the goals we've chatted about. Um, if you would like to utilize this pyramid for upcoming goals that you have, please feel free to do it. It's always nice to be able to write things down, kind of look at making a plan. And even if you don't have a complete plan, you got to start somewhere. So this is a wonderful tool you guys can use in your tool belt. And uh, we're going to be moving on and talking a bit about skills, interests, passions, and dreams. So let's move over into, well, We've already done our goal setting. We're going to move into our what do I bring on the journey, um, which is kind of the title of our session today. So, Robert, I'm passing it over to you. And I'm going to be asking all of our students to turn to page three of your workbooks. And you should be seeing career word cloud on the very, very top part. Um, and Robert is going to start us on this activity. Thanks, Angelica. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I was doing a bit of a segue to my portion here because um, so so if you look at page three, there's there's a massive career word cloud and you'll see that it's it it's not just things like I like math or I like science or I like art, um, but there's a whole number of activities and like that you will see those types of topics in there, too. But there are other types of activities and and interests and and words that you'll see here that you might be drawn to. And the idea here is is sort of what I was alluding to earlier in, in one of the earlier slides. Think about your interests and your passions. Think about what you like to do in and outside of school or how you like to interact with people. Because um, I'm, I'm kind of foreshadowing here, but but in life, you, you kind of want to follow your passions as opposed to following the money, so to speak. So just, just kind of maybe put that, put that in perspective. And let's just take a moment to circle a minimum of 15 words. Um, I don't necessarily think we need to put a timer. Uh, I don't necessarily think we need, yeah, I don't necessarily think we need to put a timer, but let me maybe put up your hands when you think you're, you've gone through the word cloud and you're, you're ready to talk. This is a great activity. I've done it myself. So if our teachers want to participate as well, we'll wait till 
some hands come up. And again, love to hear some of those words that our students have uh, identified. Sure. And I also might have overemphasized the passions and interests, but that's just because that's me. You could also, like if, if other people have identified um, things about you that that you're particularly good at, you can also identify them in this word cloud too. I just did mine again. I haven't done it in a couple of years, so I just did it. And just so you guys know, if you see the same word that you identify with in multiple places on the grid, feel free to circle it again. And that doesn't have to count as a separate word. So you might see some of the repeating terms there. When you see it, just circle it um, and you'll see why in about a minute. So just put your hands up quickly. You can raise it up when you're done and then we'll, we'll wait till the majority of our, of our students are ready to go. So I think a lot of our Centennial Spruce Grove students are all complete. Is that right, guys? You guys are all done? Fantastic. Mr. McGillivray, uh, how is it Princeton? How are you doing, bud? Are you almost done? Perfect. OK. All right, Robert, do you want to maybe share some of the words? Or do you want to see if we have any volunteers that want to share some of the words that popped up? Yeah, I, I guess. Um... If you go off mute, or are, is anyone willing to share? But maybe, maybe even if you like, just put the page or or think about an area. Like there, there are these these uh, letters and numbers on the on the page. Do you, do do you see any patterns about whether or not you're kind of close to like A one or B two or C three or combinations of those? Yes, that's good directions. If you guys see that you have like a clustering of words or you have a lot of words in one kind of section, see if there's one that sticks out more than the other. Um, and you can see they're kind of not really outlined on page three, but they are in little squares. So um, I'll, put, I'll go first. I ended up having the same amount of words circled in two quadrants, if we wanna call it that. I was A2 and D2. Let's see what other quadrants some of our students landed in. Preston, Preston landed in uh, A2 and pretty much uh, C2 is where he landed. Perfect, that's great Preston. Keep that in mind because we're gonna do a reveal. Could we have one of our students and Mrs. McCulley's share which quadrant they're in? Oh, I'm in A3. A2? A3. Oh, A3. Yeah. Mm 
Excellent. Yeah. So um, before we have the big reveal towards the end, you could also, if, if you could pick four of your circled words, this is another activity, and put each of them in one of the categories. Or, or what I like to do is think about, think about your interests, your skills, your strengths, and your passions, and, and identify four of those words that kind of fit within. So um, I, I'm not, I'll just use an example. I like to spend, I, I, I like to spend my spare time outdoors. It could be an example. But from a skills perspective, I know how to do like math really well. And from a strengths perspective, people tell me that I, I can pro solve problems. And passions and dreams, this is going to be funny, but I actually have no passions and dreams associated with what I do for a living. So it's like <laughs> I have a passion and dream for, for running. <laughs> but, uh, but it, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it's an interesting exercise because, uh, well, well, we'll talk about that a bit later. But, to, but think about your, for yourself on the words that you chose. Um, what, uh, what would you fill in in, in these four squares? It's a great precursor. We're trying to get us to stay on page three because uh, we're going to get you flipping over to the next page and we're going to share what kind of maybe career paths align really well with your skills. So even if you just think about if you want to write it down, fantastic. If not, um, we have these four quadrants on page four. So is everyone ready to flip the page to page four? Okay, I see some heads nodding. Thank you very much. Let's go to page four, guys. And let's break things down. You have a couple quadrants you can talk about, Robert. We have a lot of A2, A3, D2. If you know which one, A2, A1, A. Yeah, so, is, so, so, you're C2 and C2. so the interesting thing about this word cloud now is when you look at, if you look at the words that you had circled, now, now look, think about how they could kind of align and match up with, with the various sections here identified by the A, the letters and numbers. So we did hear a lot of A2s and A3s. A2 kind of leans you more towards an education and training perspective. And an A3 kind of leans you more towards a science, technology, and engineering perspective. Um, I was I was actually reflecting a little bit as we were going through this exercise. Um, so I am a lawyer for a living, but I, the only word that would ever actually get me into that law and security quadrant is just the problem solving aspect of it. Like I'm not sure if anyone actually likes stress, or 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 handles or, or exhibits the ability to handle stress really well, but. Um, but I think I was just, it was just leading me to reflect upon the fact that you can find your passion and there are still like avenues within that passion or within that interest where you can find some careers that have a lot of general application. So I, I mentioned earlier, I was really good at math when I was in school. And that sort of led me more into the finance world and more into um, so yeah, more of the finance finance quadrant, and that's why I do banking law for a read for for a living. Um, not necessarily, I was not not necessarily outgoing or argumentative or or um, in debate or anything like that in high school. But I found my way in my career because of my passion for or at least my interest in math. Um, my my other issue with the pat sorry my other deal with the passion is is sometimes and I've met a lot of lawyers that find this some some lawyers are really passionate about um, intellectual property what does that mean um, they're really into like they really had a science background and they were in engineering and whatnot and so they found a, a career in law that kind of directed them towards that passion so this is this is a bit of a you can you can find your you can find and align your interests and skills and and strengths with a potential career path, but it doesn't actually end there. Like the the adventure can kind of move on further into other avenues. Um, there, there's a whole world of options out there. 
I love that. That is great. Doing a quick timestamp, guys. We're at five after 11. So we have only 25 minutes left with you and we really want to get to a game component. So I just really would love to see a quick show of hands. How many students were surprised with which quadrants they got into? Like, would you have ever seen, could you ever see yourself in health sciences or finance or arts and audiovisual? Is anyone surprised with where the majority of their words came? No, that's good. No surprises. That's good. You know, that means that, you know, um, sometimes it, it, some people are t totally taken off guard. I know for me, I landed in education and training, which is what I'm doing right now. Um, and I also landed in marketing, sales, and service. And previous to my role at JA, I was in the world of broadcast media, and we were doing lots of storytelling and writing, and there was lots of marketing involved. So it's kind of cool um, how this kind of lays things out. It's not set in stone, guys. Nothing is black and white. We always change. We're always growing and evolving. But it's kind of nice to see, like Robert said, some of the things you like to spend your time and energy on, where that could potentially land you um, in the world of work. So we just want to open up your eyes to that. So thank you all for participating in that. Does anyone have any questions or any comments for Robert and I before we get into um, talking about post-secondary? Because that's the next step. We got to work backwards from our careers and some of the things we want to do to make money and income. Okay, I'll take this silence as that we're good to go. So I'm just going to go through a few of these slides that we're not going to do just due to time constraints. All of your educators will have access to uh, this stuff afterwards. So probably a good time for a little bit of a breather and a video before we get into uh, talking about education and where education can bring us and all the opportunities that come with staying in school. And then we have a Jeopardy game we're gonna get you guys to participate in. So this is a little longer, it's about a three and a half minute video. We'll play it and then we'll get into the last half of our lesson. Let's ask students some important questions about their hopes for their future lifestyle and what it will cost. What do you see in your future? Pay attention, these are questions you should ask yourself to prepare for what lies ahead. What do you imagine your life to be like at 30? When I'm 30, I hope to have an established career. As for my living conditions, I like to live in the city. Do you know what it costs for your future home? I'm not exactly sure how much a condo will cost. So I know per week they range from like $500, so it comes around $2,000 a month. Do you know how much it costs for post-secondary education? If I'm personally going to be expecting $15,000 a year, other schools have it less, other schools even have it more. Personally, for the university I'm going to, I'm expecting about ten dollars to $12,000 for residents. Eight to $9,000 a year. I think it also depends on what kind of career you have. But when you're going internationally, I know it's a lot more. It can come up to $36,000 a year. Do you have a budget? Um, personally, I have a budget. Going to university, having a budget is essential because you're not only paying for residence, you're paying for textbooks, meals, sometimes when you go out for entertainment and whatnot. So that's huge. Where did you learn about budgeting? I personally learned here at school. We had a junior achievement program come in and that's where I learned. What is the difference between college and university? I've been told that university is more for careers that involve thinking and more theoretical while college is more hands-on. So if you were to become a hairstylist, you'd be going to college. How should you prepare for post-secondary? If you don't know what fields or interests you have, I definitely suggest taking an aptitude test. Keeping your grades up is um, a huge part of it because there is a lot of competition. Go on the university's website, and if you have any questions, you've asked your guidance counselor. Really, it's, it's very tough to figure out what, you're, what you want to do at that point. But what you can assess is like your skills, for example. I believe that when you're in high school, when you're transitioning through there, join a lot of clubs, reach out to different organizations, like clubs, organizations, those are the things that get you through the furthest. What do you think is starting pay for a university grad? First of all, it really depends on the major in terms of the, the, the demand for the job. But I think personally, the average you could expect around forty-five to 55000 What is the average pay for a part-time job? I personally get paid ten seventy-five. I get paid thirteen fifty. 
When you are in the workplace, is it crucial that you conduct yourself in ethical ways? And what does it mean in ethical ways? Well, I think it's important to not cause much conflict in, in the workplace since it's a professional environment. And also because um, when you ever, whenever you see some some conflict going on, you should try to report it, or you should even like him step up and try to resolve it yourself. Ethics is basically just doing the right thing, and it's like it comes back to your morals as a person. It's important to think about what you want out of your future and the realistic expectation of what everything will cost. Plan ahead, budget, and you can reach your goals. Okay, so I'm just going to backtrack here and not play the video. I'm going to stop the screen share for a second, guys. Um, and I wanted to take a step back because we're going to try to conclude our hour together talking a little bit about the differences and some of the institutes that are around, you know, in the Metro Edmonton area up north it was Keanu and uh, the Grand Prairie Regional College and things of that nature. But um, I want to bring it back to how we were talking about creating simple goals and even just graduating, how that is such an important goal to be focusing in on. Um, the more information you know, the more you're starting to think about your future now is advantageous for you guys. So we want to just give you a little glimpse into kind of what's available out there. So as you go through junior high and you get into high school, if you're focusing in on completing your courses there and you see the potential of moving forward, you can set yourself up for great success um, by going and getting further education to get that job or get that career and get that skill set. Anything you want to precursor with, Robert, before we, we talk a little bit about the differences? No, that's good. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to go into the PowerPoint. Actually, I'm switching. I'm going to go to our... JA campus and we have some flashcards that Robert is going to take you guys through. So I'm going to screen share and hopefully the right the right screen comes up for me. Let me just find it. Show all windows. Here we go. And I guess while we're while while the screen is coming up here, just to establish a bit of a premise here, we do have a Jeopardy game that's coming up here. So um, a lot of the answers that you'll see here kind of is premised on 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 some of the flashcards that we're going through. Perfect. Um, so the, these are the flashcards. This is just a little bit of an information um, information sharing on on the various questions, which you can actually follow along as well on page five of your workbooks. But uh, I think it's useful to just go through them out loud, just so that we can get a bit of a level set as to the information that we're going to be talking about or that we'll be dealing with in, in the Jeopardy game. So the first question is, when can students start college, university, or apprenticeships? Um, and the answer for that is after you earn a high school diploma. So there goes, uh, Mr. McGillivray, there, there's, your, there's sort of the next level goal after, after graduating grade 12. Uh, next question, how, college, how, how are college programs special? And the answer is, college, colleges prepare you for a particular career or occupation. Colleges often offer practical or hands-on training. Some colleges focus on one field, such as agriculture, art, health science, or military programs. Uh, next question, how long are college and university programs? And college programs can be one to four years long. University programs are a minimum of four years. These are called undergraduate programs. And graduate programs can be an additional one to six years. So legit, you could be in school for like 10 years, right, Robert? If you're going the university route, depending on what you want to study. Correct, yeah. And I think the one to six years, like a very similar would be like becoming a doctor. Yeah. Um, is, is is likely of up to 10 years and, and there's a bit of a practicum or residency after you graduate from medical school as well. So yeah. uh, just and by way of example, lawy lawyers is seven years. It's four years for an undergrad and, and three additional years for law school. Awesome. Lots of time, but it pays off in the end. Yeah. Next question, what do colleges award you for graduating? Uh, when you graduate from college, you will be awarded a diploma or a certificate. Colleges also offer bachelor degrees in applied areas of study. Uh, next question, what are some examples of college programs? Uh, 
firefighting, graphic design, civil engineering technology, dental hygiene, child and youth care, practical nursing, and more. Uh, what if I don't know which program to take? Um, a general first year where you a general first year where you can sample different kinds of subjects can be helpful to see what you might like to learn about. And that happens a lot. Sometimes, you know, students just don't know. You think by 18, you know what you're going to do with the rest of your life, but we're constantly learning and things are changing, right? So it's yeah. nice to have that option if you're not like fully on board with a specific field. Yeah. Now, what do some, why do some students go to college and university? Uh, some students earn a college diploma first and then go to university to earn a degree. Others earn a university degree first and then go to college to train for a particular occupation. There, there really isn't a, a set straight line path. Like you can choose either or. Um, I was talking to someone at the Junior Achievement event and they're saying sometimes you can invest a little bit in your college diploma, find your passion, and then really expand on that passion by doing a degree in that area. Lots of options out there to give you and sharpen the skill set that you need, you know, to do well in the world of work so you can goal set and achieve everything you want. For sure. How are university programs special? Many universities offer professional programs to be a doctor, dentist, veterinarian, lawyer, or, or accountant. You begin these programs after two to four years of undergraduate study. These programs often require a special entrance exam and high marks to be admitted. I'm assuming you need to get really good marks to get into the School of Law. <laughs> Correct, uh, yeah. Robert, yeah. And that's yeah. where President was talking about just focusing on his day-to-day -day tasks and paying attention and focusing on the homework and the coursework. You know, you need to start that early on so you have those habits as you go into potentially further education if that's on your agenda, right? Yeah, law, law schools have both an entrance exam and a required um, GPA to get into law school, but mm -hmm. but I, I will emphasize like it really does start with maybe a, a bit of a goal setting if that's something that you wanted to achieve, and mm -hmm. and just under understanding and research the the steps it takes to get there. Hundred percent. We're almost done, guys, and then we're gonna do a Jeopardy game to close out before we let you go at eleven thirty. Yeah. So, what do universities? Oh, we already got that. Yeah. Oh, so what do universities? Like your, yeah, universities. Yeah. What do universities award you for graduating? An undergraduate degree or bachelor's degree? This degree usually takes four years to complete and qualifies you for a graduate degree like a master's or a do doctoral degree. So many levels. <laughs> uh, what is apprenticeship training? Apprenticeship training is an agreement between a person wishing to learn a skill and a skilled and experienced tradesperson called a journey person. Besides hands-on experience, apprenticeship programs require in-school training as well. The in-school training often takes place at a college. I know here in the Metro Edmonton area, we have Nate. I know GPRC also offers a lot of uh, things up North Keanu College. So lots of options in the province of Alberta. What jobs have apprenticeship training? Uh, there are lots. Some include electrician, carpenter, welder, cabinet maker, agricultural equipment technician, baker, hairstylist, and more. Awesome, and our last flashcard for the session. How long does it take to complete an apprenticeship program and become a certified tradesperson? Uh, it generally takes two to five years. Most of the training is provided in the workplace. Normally an apprentice works for 40 to 44 weeks a year and goes to school for six to eight years, sorry, six to eight weeks of in-class training. So definitely some differences, right? When we were talking on the university level that you could go upwards of six to 10 years, colleges offer a little bit shorter and then apprenticeships have a different timeline. So I guess the key thing here is that there's so many options out there. Maybe once, you know, youth and our students today, if they start thinking and planning ahead, you know, they start with their interests and passions, they do their goal setting, and then it's doing research and kind of seeing what that future looks like, right? Planning is kind of key. Awesome. So uh, I'll just stop screen sharing because we're going to get our Jeopardy game up. But does anyone have any questions uh, for us on um, some of the things we talked about um, or any comments from Mr. McGillivray or Mrs. Cully? 
Okay, that's good. So you guys want to stick on, uh, I think it says page three in your work, but it's page five. Keep your college, university, and apprenticeship page open. We're going to do a JA Jeopardy game, uh, and you guys can reference this to find the answers. Okay, so um, I'm going to pull up um, the game. And because we have four students at Centennial Middle School, and we have Preston up in uh, Rosary uh, Roman School, we'll get all of you guys to kind of pick a category and a score. And we'll give you guys like 30 seconds to pick the right answer. We'll try to do a couple rounds um, before we leave things for any Q&A and we wrap up. So I'm going to do a screen share. And Robert, um, you will be kind of our, well, it's not Nana White, because that's the Wheel of Fortune, our Alex, Alex Trebek, Trebek, OK? Yes. So um, let me go into the screen share. And then maybe Miss uh, Ms. Cully, if you can um, get us your four students, just pick a random order for them to uh, pick their category and score. We'll see how everyone does. Yeah. Okay, I'll have you guys pick a category and score, okay? Okay, so let me get into the Jeopardy game. And we won't be able to go through all of it, but you guys can do it as well after you have your kit delivered if you wanna go into it as well. So here is our game. Let me just bump up the zoom in a little bit more. You guys can kind of see it. Are you? Are you I, I don't see your screen. Yeah. Oh, it's not showing up? Okay, I just got it on here. So let me go into Zoom and screen share. Thank you. Okay, it should be loading now. Let me know if you see. All right, Ms. Colley, why don't you give us our first contestant on the JA Jeopardy game? Okay, Todd, why don't you choose one of the phrases in the orange and then a number? College 300. College three. Right. The answer: preparing for a particular career or occupation. Which question do you think? Oh, I guess we can go through the questions. What do you need to focus on to see the world? What do colleges focus on? What's the purpose of high school? What's the point of learning to drive a car? Preparing for a particular career or occupation. They say, what do colleges focus on? Let's see if the end, that is correct. Yay. Good job. Okay, so that's so 300 that's for whom? 300 points for? Uh, Ms. Cully, what was that student's name? Todd. Todd has okay. 300, perfect. Okay. Next. Who would like to go next? I see a hand up. No. Oh. Jay will pick one. <laughs> Where is it, Shay? Jay, yeah. Apprenticeship okay. for 400. All right. 400. Hands on experience and in school training. What's the fastest path to a career? How can one become an accountant? What types of experiences does an apprentice get? What types of experiences are least helpful to becoming a mechanic? Which of the four do you think is the right question? Uh, she said, what types of experiences does an apprentice get? Correct. So 400. Okay. Good work, guys. Okay. Who, who is next? Sorry. That's okay. Uh, next, <laughs> school bells. Uh, next is Levi. Um, it's about time for... Ooh, it's about time one. for 500. Answer, you can take a general first year. What, what do you do if you aren't accepted to a university? What if I don't know which program to take? What do you do when you start an apprenticeship? You should do this. You should do this. Is you want what? <laughs> Is you? <laughs> Yeah, um, there's a little spelling error there. <laughs> yeah, you, you want to later complete it. You should do this if you want to, <laughs> if you want to later complete a master's degree. Which one, Levi? He says the third one. What to do when you start an apprenticeship. 
Oh, no. Yeah, unfortunately, the question is, what if I don't know which program to take? So that was uh, the reference to like, if, if you really don't know what you want to do yet after you graduate high school, you can take a general year to to um, to think about it and, and see where your passion is. Nice try, Levi. All good. And who is our last Centennial Middle School participant? Jolie. Um, university. Two hundred. Two hundred. Three hundred. Three hundred. Okay. Okay, doctor. What is an example of a career you can have if you go to university? What is an example of a career you can get from a college program? What do you call someone who treats animals when they are sick? And what type of education is required to service elevators? First, second, or third, or fourth? That's the first one. First one, okay. Correct. Oh, correct. Oh. 300. That was for Julie? Yes. Awesome, good work, Julie. <laughs> and then should we go to Mr. McGilvery? Is, is it Preston? Yeah. 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 <clears throat> All right, Preston, you got the last question right now, uh, or the last option on the board. What would you like? Um, take college 400. 400. College 400. Answer is a diploma or certificate. Options are what credential is required to enter law school? What do you earn at the end of a degree program? What, what the easiest path to finding it? What is the easiest path to finding a job? And what do colleges award you for graduating? One, Second two, three, one. four. Second one. Second one. Unfortunately, this one is the call. What do colleges award you for graduating? I think the distinction there is the degree. The degree is is actually more for university. But that's fantastic. Thank you guys so much for participating, Preston. Uh, everyone, Jay, Todd, Levi, and Julie. Um, that's the first round. We only have three minutes left, so um, this will be available for your teachers if you guys want to be doing a few more rounds of there. Um, it's kind of nice to try to apply some of the the learnings we had through the flashcards in there and the um, choose your own adventure and economics for success has other games that um, your teachers will be looking into once it gets to their school. Um, so we just wanted to thank you, Robert and I, the hour went by so quickly. Um, just wanna thank you for your participation and um, to your educators, thank you for bringing JA into your school. Um, anything you'd like to add Robert uh, before we're, we're done our session? Uh, I'd just like to reiterate the point, like the part of the lesson here is that there is no straight path and, you know, without getting into my life adventures and where my life took me, I just, I will let you know that even when there are pits, pitfalls and, and taking life in different directions and uh, I don't need to overcomplicate things, but like families and kids and all of that kind of stuff, life can take you in many different directions. But, uh, but if you always keep a long-term outlook out there and think about, you know, giving back and, and leaving this world a better place for the next generation and the next seven generations to come, it's, it's always a, a, life, a lifelong learning that you can take from this. That's very well said. Mr. McGillivray and Mrs. Cully, anything you guys would like to ask or comment on before we talk back to Mary to finish off the session? No, thank you very much. It was a great session. Awesome. Thank you guys for your participation. No, it was, it was a good session for sure. Learned lots. I think it'll help out Preston. <laughs> yes. Thank you for, for being the sole student, Preston. You'll be the, uh, the ambassador for the rest of the students at uh, Rosary School. I know that uh, we're sending your teacher the kit, so more people will get this, this content. Over to you, Mary. Wonderful. Well, thank you, everyone, for showing up, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye. Great, thanks, Take everyone. care, everyone. I'll be in touch with uh, the teachers following this. And thank you, Robert, for joining me today. It was a pleasure. Great. Thanks. Have a good day. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.